I'll try not to be too much of a total twerp when I'm tweeting my trivial twaddle and trifles on Twitter. Truthfully. <music> Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Head Parade. A couple of quick announcements before I get started with the main event, so to speak. Uh, first of all, I am now on Twitter. Yes, I was encouraged to join Twitter at the behest of a couple of my YouTube friends. Now, I don't know how active I'll be. At, I'll try to tweet at least something every day. But yeah, you'll probably see the random thoughts and musings, mostly about music, but possibly the occasional random tweet here and there. Uh, you'll find a link to my Twitter feed down below in my description. So I encourage you to pop over there and uh, give me a follow if you haven't yet. Now, as a way of celebrating my arrival on Twitter, I plan to live tweet during the Grammy Awards tomorrow night, Sunday night. So uh, you can find my tweets under the hashtag Tom's 2019 Grammys in case you want to tweet along with me or just read my weird stray thoughts on the, the Grammy Awards. And if you found your way here by way of Twitter, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you like what you see enough to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future videos. And I invite you to browse my past content to your heart's content. Also, a friend of mine and fellow YouTuber named Sam Bennett has an ongoing project called the Criticast Network. Now, it's basically a roundtable-style discussion podcast that dives deeper into artists, albums, and various music-related subjects, with a rotating panel of commentators, including Kyle from Track by Track, Ryan from True North Reviews, Noah from SMEB Reviews, and a few others. And I, myself, will be joining in very soon, where we discuss the subject of Michael Jackson. Now, uh, Sam also interviewed me a few months ago on his own channel. You'll find a link to that particular podcast, as well as Sam Bennett's primary channel and the Criticast Network channel, all linked to in my description below. So I strongly encourage you to subscribe to both of his channels, and of course to keep an eye out for yours truly to show up there soon. Uh, Sam is just a great guy, and I think he's got the chops to make a solid adult career out of music journalism, especially with the ambition for it that he's already showing. And now on to the subject at hand for today, which is an album review. Yes, for the first time I'm actually going to try doing the entire video about one album. Wish me luck. Anyway, the uh, featured album today is Seasons, the third album by rock band American Authors. Now, I found out about American Authors in probably the same way most people did. One of their first singles, Best Day of My Life, was used in several different TV commercials. It was such a catchy and uplifting track that it didn't take much more convincing beyond that song to uh, get me to pick up their debut album, Oh What a Life, which I was glad to find out was pretty much filled with more of the same kind of hooky energy. And I le ended up loving it so much, in fact, that I did not hesitate to pick up their sophomore album, What We Live For, even though I did not listen to a single track beforehand. That's how much faith I had in the band. Now, both albums ended up being amongst my favorites of their respective years, and each has more than a couple of songs in its track list that I still love today as much as I did when I first heard them. Now, there's just something about the irrepressible energy and super catchiness of tracks like Believer and Hit It from their debut album, as well as Pride, Pocket Full of Gold, and Right Here, Right Now from their sophomore album. And there were even a few ballads on those two albums that have a kind of a kind of intimacy and sincerity to them, like Oh What a Life's closing title track and Replaced from their second album. Plus, what other band has the guts to inject healthy doses of banjo and mandolin into rock music? I mean, come on. So understandably, my expectations for their newest album seasons were really high, perhaps unrealistically high. Now, I have to wonder what it's like for some artists when they gear up for their third album. I mean, everybody knows about the sophomore slump, but I mean, that's become such a cliche that it probably overshadows the potential and possibly even more worrisome pitfalls of the third album. You know, if they stick with the sonic aesthetic they've carried through their first two albums, they run the risk of critics calling them stale or stagnant. But then if they go in a different direction, they take the chance of alienating their core fan base. And of course, as we all know, it's not often that an artist will please both the critics and the fans. But anyway, getting to the crux of the matter here, yes, this album is a bit of a disappointment, or at least it was on the first couple of listens. Seasons seems to have an overall darker sonic palette than their previous two albums, which is kind of ironic since its cover art is the brightest and most colorful of any of their releases. Now, don't get me wrong, the darker and more somber sound is not in and of itself a bad thing. 
I mean, although I personally like my music more upbeat, I have no shortage of, you know, downer albums uh, in my collection that are very good, if not excellent. Uh, the thing is, if you're going to go in that direction, you need to maintain the inspiration and originality. And that's where I feel they're lacking a bit on this album. Now, instrumentally, for instance, they seem to have taken just a few too many cues from Imagine Dragons, uh, particularly the heavy stadium-shaking drum beats, often at the expense of the rest of the inter instrumentation, you know, being pulled back into the background. And I find it really strange that they made such a choice right after Imagine Dragons' most disappointing album. But it doesn't just stop with the instrumentation. I mean, the lyrics also seem to have less originality in them in many places, and they feel, honestly, a bit paint-by-numbers in several of the songs. Now, their previous two albums don't have the deepest lyrics in the world, I'll admit that, but there was something about them, I don't know, it might have just been the cadence, you know, the, the, the rhythms between the syllables, that gave the tracks on those albums a kind of a mo momentum that I'm just not feeling here. And now that's not to say that every track is a dud. I mean, in fact, I can feel that some of the more ho-hum tracks like Stay Around and Calm Me Down might still be growing on me. Um, I'm still listening to this album and still kind of metabolizing it. And uh, But one of the songs that I've become particularly enamored of in my last couple of listens is Deep Water. With its quasi-gospel feel, now, despite me not being religious, I can still get the goosebumps from a good, inspiring, gospel-sounding tune. And the last two tracks on the album, Before I Go and Real Place, those, those might actually be two of the best ballads they've ever done so far. Now, the two tracks that most resemble what we heard on their past albums are I Want to Go Out and Bring It On Home, and they're definitely hooky. Uh, although they still feel like they're missing that certain something, probably in the lyrics. Uh, I want to like Can't Stop Me Now, but for one thing, it reminds me a little too much of some other song, or maybe more than one song, that I've heard before but for the life of me can't remember. And also, um, even as like a self-empowerment type of song, which is what the lyrics bring across, it still seems to fall a bit flat. And I, I just, you know, for some reason I just can't put my finger on. Uh, now, I could also mention the nearly complete lack of mandolin or banjo on this album. Although, in a way, that's a moot point because it wouldn't fit in any way with the sort of mood they, they're trying to create on this album. But, yeah, overall, as much as it pains me, uh, I can't say this album is any more than okay. Uh, but do not let it stop you from checking out either of their two previous albums. Uh, they're, they're far better than Seasons, in my opinion, and as I said, they're among my favorites. And I feel an infectious energy in them that, well, I just couldn't find on this one. So anyway, that sums up my thoughts on American Author's third and most recent album, Seasons. Let me know what you thought of this album in the comment section below. Uh, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Comments, suggestions, requests, constructive criticisms, any or all of the above, whether about this video or anything on my channel or about music in general, I encourage the feedback. I want to hear from you. Please be sure to subscribe as well if you haven't yet. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And check out all my past videos to see what you might have missed. Plus, I invite you to check out my friends and fellow YouTubers channels, which are linked to in my description below. They're all very much worth your time, and they wouldn't be in that list if they weren't. Also, as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm now on Twitter, and you can find a link to my Twitter feed in the description below. Be sure to follow me there so you can enjoy my stray thoughts and random musings about music and so forth. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.